two objects are connected by a light string that passes over the fractalist pulley as in figure 5.26. Draw three body diagrams of both objects. If the incline is frictionless and if mass 1 equals 2.00 kilograms, mass 2 equals 6.00 kilograms, and theta equals 55.03, find A, the accelerations of the object, B, of the objects. B, the tension in the string, and C, the speed of each object, 2.00 seconds after being released from rest. C is irrelevant. We've already done things like that. Once we figure out the acceleration, it's just UAM. We know that already. Um, so, as I believe this one is mass one, this one is mass two. Marcus, yes? Uh, oh, yes. And this is the theta down here? Yeah. Okay. So, clearly, we need to draw some free body diagram. Notice that this problem is actually different than problems we've done before in that we're going to have how many free body diagrams? Two. two. We're not going to just have one free body diagram, we're going to have two. And that becomes more and more common in this class. We'll have two, we'll have three, we'll have more. It'll be fun. As stated, this problem is not nearly as much fun as it should be. So we're going to add that the coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.100. Why do it with no friction? There's no fun there. So let's start by drawing some free body diagrams. Now, I drew a picture up here, and it's going to get kind of complicated for me to draw the free body diagrams right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of redraw it down here, and we'll draw free body diagrams here. So free body diagrams. Let's start with the free body diagram on mass 1. Michael, free body diagram on mass 1. I'm just for fun going to call it weight. I'm going to give it a capital W. But yes, force some gravity. Tension up. Those are the forces on mass one. True. Uh, okay. Forces on mass two. Okay. So I'm going to call that weight. Great question. Let's talk about the direction of the force of friction. Things we know about the direction of the force of friction. Josh? It opposes motion. What else? Force of friction, direction. Always opposes motion. Okay. Um, parallel to the surface. And there's one more that I added last year just because it's useful, because you guys so often think that the force of friction, Sam? It's independent of the force applied. You often think it has to do with the direction of force applied. It does not. So it's independent 
of the direction of the force applied. And you can see that especially here, we don't even have a force applied. So, we need to know parallel to the surface means it's either going to be up the incline or down the incline. Right? So, which direction is the object moving? know that to be true? Uh, it looks like it. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to go there. It looks like it. Okay? I would agree with you right now, we could say it looks like it. Do we know that to be true? No. Right now we're going to make an educated guess. We're going to say we think it's going down the incline. We'll talk about that a little bit further when we get farther into this. There's something else wrong with our free body diagram. What is it? It's subtle but important. Andrew? Um, do we not know if it's um, static friction or if it's kinetic friction? We do, in fact, know whether it's static or kinetic, Cheryl. Sure. Because? Because it's just It's moving. Right? We know it's moving, therefore this is going to be kinetic friction. There is our free body diagram. We have drawn our free body diagram. Show me what we're going to do next. Uh -huh. The next thing we're going to do is break forces into components. Now, how are we going to do that? What sort of components are we talking about here? What components do we need to break things into? Bob? The perpendicular parallel. Because we have an incline, we need to break things into parallel and perpendicular directions. Uh, it is a much better idea, rather than tilting in x and y direction, to instead talk about the parallel and perpendicular directions, which are parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. The only force we need to break into a component that is parallel and perpendicular to the incline is MYX. Um, the, weight. the weight, the force of gravity. What we're going to do right now is we're going to derive the equations for breaking the force of gravity into its components. So we have, let's just take a general object, let's take a general incline, and let's say we have our force of gravity, which is synonymous with the weight, which is down right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a brief moment and we're going to break the weight into components. I'm going to just derive those equations right here and we'll come back to the problem in just a moment. So we know this is theta. We need to break the force of gravity into its components. We have the force of gravity perpendicular to the incline and we have the force of gravity parallel to the incline. Looking at this, we're going to call this one theta 1. We're going to call this a right angle, we're going to call this one theta 2. Okay. If this is theta 1 and this is a right angle and this is theta 2, that makes this angle right here, class, theta 1. Theta one. Right. You can see, because this is a 90 degree angle and this whole thing is a right angle, 90 degree angle, that theta 1 and theta 2 are going to end up to 90 degrees. So it has to be theta 1. So then we could say that using the concept of Sokotoa, Oh. Oh. The sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is the force of gravity parallel over the force of gravity. Therefore, we get that the force of gravity parallel is equal to the force of gravity times sine of theta, or mg sine theta. And we can do the same thing with cosine. Cosine theta, that is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, the force of gravity perpendicular divided by the force of gravity. So the force of gravity perpendicular equals the force of gravity times the cosine of theta, or mass times the acceleration of gravity times the cosine of theta. Now, we have derived those two equations for the force of gravity, both parallel and perpendicular. At this point, those are things that you can use. We're going to use those so often that you can just say, we know the force of gravity parallel equals mg sine theta. Force of gravity perpendicular equals mg cosine theta. You're going to use that so often, that's fine. Now, we've broken our weight into components. Oh, I, we're missing something on our free body diagram. Something important. Right now, I'm having a hard time distinguishing between everything. What are we missing? Subscripts. Justin, what's a good subscript we can put on what? What's the issue here? Um, well, you got or the mass one, you can just put a one, right? Subscript, all right. Free body diagram, what do I need to, to label? Um, you can put like P1. Aha, uh -huh. tension one, 
tension one, um, weight one, and then tension two, uh, w, and weight two. Okay. Now, it says something about the pulley here. Sydney, what does it say about the pulley? And? Does it also say it's massless? No. It should. Say again? Light. Okay, that's what it meant by light. It means light. Okay, it's you know. a light string. A light, well, the light string. Okay, anyway, the pulley <laughs> needs to be both frictionless and massless at this point. Because this, the pulley is both frictionless and massless, we can say that tension one is equal to tension two because it's the same string and the pulley is frictionless and massless. Do you think there will come a time when it is neither frictionless nor massless? And then tension one will not equal tension two. We'll clearly go through that when we get there. But right now, because the pulley is both frictionless and massless, tension one equals tension two. So I'm actually just going to label that as tension. So let's redraw our free body diagram. We have now tension weight one. We have uh, force normal tension. We still have the force and kinetic friction, which we have going up the incline. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, instead of having the weight two, we're going to have the weight two in the parallel direction and the weight two in the perpendicular direction. We have drawn our free body diagram. We have broken forces into components. We have redrawn our free body diagram. You guys remember the steps? Important steps. Draw the free body diagram, break into components, redraw the free body diagram. What are we going to do now, Khan? Uh, sum the forces. Sum the forces, go ahead. So, um, do you want to sum them in the parallel direction first? I don't know. Okay. That's up to you. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop you for a minute. Okay. Now, this is different than what we've done before. Before we would sum the forces, we would identify a direction. But now, not only do we need to identify a direction, we need to identify what we're summing the forces on. Are we summing the forces on mass 2 in the parallel direction? Are we summing the forces on mass 1 in the parallel direction? Are we summing the forces on the whole thing in the parallel direction? Right? Because we have two objects, and we need to be clear. So, Hani. Okay, if we sum the forces in the parallel direction on mass 2. Go ahead, sum the forces in the parallel direction on mass 2. Uh, cool. Um, you have the force of static, static friction. Actually, I'm going to stop you for a minute. We need to, I'll, I'll come back to you, Goolsby. One issue we run into when we have something that looks like this is we need to pick a direction. We have usually up is positive, down is negative, to the right is positive, to the left is negative. But when we have a string that turns things, we need to identify the direction. So we have, yes, sir? Sure, go ahead. Um, say that clockwise is positive. Uh, I would say in the direction that we think the motion is going to go. Yeah. So we think this is the direction it's going to go. So let's identify that as the positive direction. So please, always, identify the positive direction. Whenever you have a pulley that's changing the direction, you need to identify the positive direction. So we're saying that this direction is the positive direction. So we're at, uh, some of the forces in the parallel direction on mass 2. Yes, sir? Because uh, that's what Connie said. Connie, do you want to sum the force on mass 2 or on the whole thing? She's, she's now swayed, I guess. Okay, we'll do on the whole thing. 